G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. We'll move on to the Hawthorne Footy Club, position 14th on the ladder, fifth last. Their record was seven wins, two draws, and 13 losses, with a percentage of 85.2%. What do you make of Hawthorne? Late climb from them. They were very low earlier in the year when I was paying closer attention. They've had a bit of a late climb. I think they were second last with not too long. In their last yeah. six games, they went 3 2 1. Not um, bad. Two draws. <laughs> it's quite crazy. <laughs> that, one of those very draws well, was yeah. Melbourne as well. Um, so, yeah, what have, what have you made of them? Oh, uh, yeah, you sort of expected them to sort of be plodding around in the sort of mediocre positions of the ladder. Mm. But, like, they have did maximise what talent they had, sort of, I sort of thought, because I didn't think they were that talented a list, especially with the injuries and stuff they've dealt with. Mm. Like, no Sicily yeah. for the year, pretty much. Yeah, that's true. Um, they did get two extra wins this year, um, and they only lost one game in the last six after Clarkson announced that he was... Not good. Yeah. well. Yeah, they announced that yeah. he wasn't going to be coaching on, and I, d- I had this theory that I wonder if, if you remember when Bolton got sacked at Carlton and T yeah. took over, they immediately started winning. Yeah, because I, from memory, the players were, and he Teague also brought in a few of the veteran guys, but mm. Bolton was trying to. That's get what I mean. Like, into, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I don't know with Clarkson if, if at the end of the year he just thought, you know, what, I'm not going to be around here next year. Uh, let's just try and win every game. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's a theory worth exploring. Maybe someone mm. who watches Hawthorne a bit more closely than me can um, can confirm that. Mid-season draftees were very successful at Hawthorne. Mm. Uh, John Newcomb came in and broke the tackles record for a debutante in his first game. And uh, Lucky Bramble. Oh, he broke the debutante record in his first game, did he? The tap for tackles. Yeah, he broke the debutante record in his first game. I'm confused at what. You're saying it's kind of implied by saying you broke the debut. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's kind of, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> um, Bramble was a real p- good pickup for him as well. Uh, nice little half forward for my fantasy team. <laughs> uh, yeah, so th- that is something. Just, it's not too often that somebody makes a massive success of the mid season draft. So, um, be interesting to see yeah. what they get out of those players long term. I think the young forwards, in particular, for the Kaz- Kazitsky and Mitch Lewis. So, Hawthorne was sort of have been highlighted in the past for maybe not having the best young key position stocks. So they drafted Denver Granger Brass. And then someone like a Kaczynski and Mitch Lewis look promising this year. They laid picks like those. Too. Exactly, yeah, exactly right. And I think that's why people sort of on the surface look at that and go, okay, so you don't really have any high-talented uh, forwards. They traded in John Patton, um, obviously, but that didn't really work out. But um, He got himself into some strife. Yeah, and I think they can still add to that key position stocks, but uh, it's it's a bit better than I think people realise. And, and Dylan Moore was another huge positive as a young sort of... Um, forward. Pressure forward, yeah, exactly. midi type guy. Down back, Scrimshaw and uh, Chankuth Jeff yep. were uh, really promising. Yeah, Scrimshaw had a great year. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were both quite good. Uh, and Tom Mitchell had a good season. Mm. So I, I think there's some positives there. I do, do you think they kind of underachieved a little bit because I actually think that when you look at that best 22, comparing it to the other bottom four or five sides, it's pretty experienced. Like Mitchell, O'Meara, yeah. Warple. It's better than Sicily. It's better than oh, sorry, who they're Sicily. above. Shields as well. They're a clear tier above the teams they're above on the ladder. So mm. you could almost, if you're going to tier the ladder, it'd be like those first teams we mentioned, then Hawthorne's the start of the next tier. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is like, we look at their last six rounds and think, gee, that's promising for a young side. But I do wonder if I think, that last six rounds is probably how you should have always been performing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, With the experience on their list. 
Uh, they did have some injuries this year, so you did highlight James Sicily. Uh, Will Day is also one of their best young talents, yep. probably close to their, their first their first round pick in God knows how long. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and Denver Granger Brass, the other first round pick or well, top top five pick, I think yeah, he was yeah, in the end. Pick five, pick five. Um, so that that's I guess that's the downside, the fact that they didn't get games into these first rounders, um, <clears throat> but they can't really control that. It's just a negative. Um, and I guess uh, to the other negative, I guess is that. Their late season winning streak kind of cost them their draft position as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's a weird um, it's a weird dynamic there. With like, would you prefer to finish the season as strongly as they did, um, or would you rather have potentially a Jason Horn or uh, Finn Callahan or something like that? You'd probably rather the latter, considering Clarkson's gone. Like, if it was Clarkson mm. instilling something that he could build on next year, maybe yeah. you'd rather that. But the fact he's gone and they're starting. With a new coach anyway, you'd probably almost rather the influx of talent. Yeah, that's true. And I, I think it's fairly even in that draft range anyway. Yeah. So if they can't get a Jason Horn Francis or whatever, um, not a big deal. But I thought it was just worth pointing out. Some fans, like I remember when the Eagles did the same thing in 2009. We won our last, four of our last five and people were like, oh, we've missed out on Morabito. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we ended up taking Brad Shepard, so yeah. all Australian. Anyway, um, overall, what are, your, what are your thoughts on the Clarkson leaving? Uh, probably a little preemptive, but I guess they felt Sam Mitchell was ready and that was sort of the plan, I think, mm. since they pinched him back from you guys. Yeah. It was sort of probably on the cards. Yeah. I, I think it's a bit of a shame. I understand why they did it, because they think Sam Mitchell is too good to give up and, frankly, he's going to be demanding a yeah. senior coach. He could have got so. the Collingwood or Carlton job if the Carlton uh, job yeah. comes open. Yeah, I reckon he probably would have ended up the Collingwood coach, yeah. to be completely honest, if, um, if they'd let him sort of stroll into that interview yeah. process but um yeah it's unfortunate when i think clarkson still has plenty to give mm. so when you've got the almost the, the goat, goat coach yeah i'd say goat coach yeah i think it's i think it's a bit weird to be honest yeah a bit funky yeah um draft selections they have picks 5 21 24 and then 56 what would you do if you're hawthorne this off season Ooh, I you could try something like package those two second rounders and try and get another first Something try and get a couple of high end kids in rather than your depth type kids that they've sort of had the emphasis on. You're right. I do, uh, from my very shallow knowledge of the draft this year, though, I do think it evens out quite a bit after the first round. Okay. So I don't know if that. So you think it could be worth having the two dips in the yeah, second? Yeah. yeah. That, so that remains to be seen. But yeah. generally, kids rather yeah. than experience? Is that what you're, you're thinking? Yeah, like tie end. Like you want the top talented mm. kids rather than sort of like kids who you're like, yeah, this kid could be like my 18th mm. man in my 22. Yeah. You want a kid sure. who's like, yeah, that kid could be the next Dusty Martin. Yeah, you 18. want those that tier of talent, not like a, yeah, he'll fill out my team nicely. 18th man in your 22 sounds like your love life. Yeah, um, I think <laughs> I think they could certainly add youth. I think that's where they're at. But um, key positions are still something I would add to. It's not terrible anymore. Yeah. But uh, you do need a few Options. extra bites at the cherry to really nail like yeah. a really gun key for. One player I've heard they're linked to is Jared Brander from the Eagles. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how that progresses. It doesn't sound like um, it, the, the Eagles are any chance of retaining Brander, and he's a former first round draft pick with a lot of promise, mm. played out of position. So I could see. Him oh, what Brander's gone, gone? You reckon? Yeah, almost certainly. Oh, it hasn't okay. been announced, but it's one of those things where everyone knows before it's yeah. announced. Yeah, it's like the Chera situation, yeah. but without the media interest. You got lucky. Brand is not that good. So, <laughs> um, anyway, grade grade their season. C C plus, probably a C. Mm. Just yeah, did what you sort of expect with a changing over list. I gave them a C as well, um, and I think the outlook for next season could be good. I think they're a smoky for the eight because I think they're underachieved, and you've also got some gun players like Sicily, Gunston, and Day to return to the side. So, there's upside there, unless they yeah. trade Gunston, but. Um, yeah, that's something you hear in whispers about. Yeah, that happened last year as well to Collingwood or Brisbane uh, or whatever. Um, never quite eventuated. Yeah, how always happens around those Hawthorne veterans, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they could use him, to be honest. Yeah. 